Hello everyone and welcome to the first Design Direction live with me, Joseph Berry. First of all, just like to say, you know, thanks for joining me. Um, and I'd also like to introduce my sidekick for today, which is Raymar. Raymar has been kind enough to <laughs> help me set all of this up. Um, yeah, it's not my game. So um, Raymar's done a brilliant job in helping me set this up. So uh, Raymar, how are you? Yeah, what's up, Joseph? Uh, pleasure to be here. We're glad to help uh, produce a little bit of this and excited to watch you uh, design a little bit of your master class and some of the segments here. So yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, great. No, cheers. So Raymar's basically going to be helping us out. Um, please, you know, put your questions in the comments and Raymar's going to try and pick them up and then try and feed them in as well as um, if we get any technical issues as well. Um, so yes, we are having a bit of a difficult time around the globe and I thought it would be nice to kind of put a stream together um, to one, promote the masterclass that I'm putting together um, and also just share some stuff with you guys so you can kind of dig in and, and see how I'm working. And, you know, the, the idea of today is really you're going to kind of shadow what I'm doing. Um, you're going to get into some of my thought process and how I'm starting to break things down. And then we can go from there. So we're going to break it down into two parts. As you can see on the screen, I'm going to run through the masterclass with you, what it entails, what's going to be inside of it. Um, and then, again, you guys, you know, asking questions to get in your input at an early stage so I can make sure that what I'm putting inside of this course is going to be beneficial to you and it's going to be stuff that you want to learn so that's coming up for the first part and then the next part will be building out that design that I shared with you guys in the group so without further ado let's get straight into the masterclass so Starting off with a masterclass, it's obviously something that I've been thinking out for a while and it's it's a course that I'm going to be putting putting together for you guys. Um, and this course is really coming at people that want to take, um, you know, their, their skills to the next level. This is, you know, not a course that's going to be about how quickly you can build things out, you know, or, or the money that you're going to be earning. This is really focused on your craft and how you develop them skills to, you know, put yourself above other Webflow designers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to kind of run through this site, give you a little kind of flavor of the things that we'll be doing inside of this course. And then at the end of that, if we have any questions, we'll ask a few of them questions, we'll I'll answer a few of them questions, and then we can dive into building out that page. So let's just reload this site. Some of the things that you're going to be building, you know, so simple load interactions. We're also going to be popping off straight away with quite a complex load animation as you see here we've built this custom grid in the back which is all built out of lines we have these 3d elements that we're going to be working on 3d is quite a big thing coming up now and it's something that i've been wanting to play inside of webflow and we've got some 3d box and then it also does some rotate on a mouse movement we also have some hover triggers as well on each of these panels. So that's kind of the complexity that we'll be going in. And that is just starting with that top header. You know, some nice rollovers we'll be looking at. Again, mouse cursor changes, how you can create all of these effects, pop-ups and overlays. And then as we dive in a little bit further, we're going to be looking at how we can import custom code from CodePen and how we can start to tweak and change. Same with the Snake game. Here you can actually play Snake live on the site and as i'm just moving my keys score changes so you're going to be learning how to input this this didn't actually look like this at all and i've, I've restyled all of this to fit exactly how it was so we're going to be looking at how we inspect code and how we can change certain bits it's just about knowing the right things to look for as we scroll down into the first section I don't know if you noticed, we just had a really subtle kind of interaction change here with the grid lines gone. We've got the old famous ping pong game here, again, just showing you how you can create looped animations. And this is just a stage animation. Then we're going to move into a technique that's well used across a lot of the scroll jacking sites. So we're going to be looking at how we can create these really nice transition effects based on scroll. And this formula will really be able to help you go into build other stuff that is very similar to this into the next section, which introduces, um, you know, three different panels, which we'd see again, some really nice, interesting effects on here, how we can create overlapped effects with depths, 
as you can see here there's you know the image is actually moving inside of that shape as well so it's not just a simple and then we go on to the really complex part of this site and we're going to be looking at how we can create transitions through um, expanding collapse modules that actually remove modules below so as you can see this module below here as i click this and you see that animation move out we've actually lost the rest of that page it is hidden it is gone because i've activated this module and as i re-click that and bring that back out it will bring you that animation back and the rest of the pages and that is a really really complex technique there not including all of the mad kind of animations that we have on individual letters so that here is lots of clicking click interactions and also looking timing interactions and how we can re remove and hide different modules on the page via a click into the next section which is just kind of some loot trigger wheel um kind of ticker tape ideas again just how we look at using different methods in animations and then this bottom bit which i haven't finished and i'm still working through all of it um is again how we use um grid we're going to be looking at flexbox we're going to be looking at all different types of things responsive layouts responsive measurements how we use them how they work across different breakpoints as we can see here we've got a little bit of effect going on here which i haven't finally completed completed so this is what i've got to start with um the course is going to be broken down into three parts we're going to have a design phase where i'm going to explain to you in detail you know how i prepare how i work up ideas how i put things together how i really go through the process of creating the designs that i do and then also preparing for animations and it's really important and i'll probably touch a little bit across this when we get into building out this site um, and then we're going to move into the build part. And again, that's just some, some techniques that I use for when we build out elements and how you build out certain elements, especially when it comes to stuff like this. It's very difficult to see the layers and understand where the layers are and you have to keep changing things around. So there's a few techniques that I use to be able to build these sections out with ease. Um, and then the final part is the animate part, which will include, you know, how we make this pixel perfect across all devices maybe looking at custom um breakpoints added in with css and then also we're going to be looking at um, animations per device type which again how you create animations that uh, slightly have to be different depending on the screen size or the resolution and we can do that inside of webflow where we can have an interaction for desktop and then we can have an interaction for mobile and they can be completely different so we're going to really learn on some advanced techniques and in essence, that is it in a nutshell. Um, is there any questions, Raymar? Is there anything in as anyone's come through? It'd be good to get people's initial thoughts. So let's just have a two second pause um, and let's just see if anyone's got any questions. Yeah, um, nothing's coming in so far. We've got, let's see, we've got Marius Serban, Thomas, we got Blake said something, love it. Definitely looking forward for that. So you've got some people hanging out, no specific questions yet. Uh, we got about 20 people no. with us, so yeah, let's uh, yeah. maybe dive into some okay. instructional stuff. I bet at that phase we'll start getting some questions for sure. Yeah, great. Nice. Okay, guys. So let's jump into the build. So before we get into this build, there's just a few things I like to do, mentally prepare. Um, you know, there's many techniques and many approaches that we can use to building out websites. Um, one that I don't like particularly is when people say that they jump straight into Webflow. I, I think that's um, definitely um, not a good way to go about creating well thought out design. Um, so for me, it's always about coming away from Webflow and just spending a few minutes mapping out designs. And they don't necessarily have to be fully finished, but as long as you have a good direction of where you're gonna go with something, that will, that will really help you when you get later on down the lines, but it also gives you other opportunities. So as we come into the design file here, and we're kind of looking out, and as I was, you know, building this along, I'm, I'm also thinking about the structure here. So to me, this feels like, you know, maybe a 30% column here and a 60% here. This one here is probably going to be maybe absolute position, which is sitting behind, and it would be triggered by a hover or click. And then we've got this space here, which would probably be a flex box. So I'm mentally preparing myself for how I'm going to go into this. And I think that's really, really important because I think if you just try and steam in things, especially with me, and I think when you do start to 
be able to, to create lots of different things you kind of go in and out a lot of things i mean i'm sure raymar you do that as well if you just dive straight into stuff that you kind of just you know you'll you'll write in and and then sometimes you get to a dead end i mean do you experience that at all yeah i mean that happens all the time i think that's the challenging part of design is uh figuring that stuff out and i think the more mm. planning you do uh, the better it gets and that's where I'm excited to learn a little bit yeah. from you because I think you probably do a better job at that than I do. I'm I tend more towards the go in and explore and play and mm. build as I go, which leaves me in some weird spots sometimes. So I do sketch out and I do plan as often as possible, especially the more complicated the projects get. Um, mm. But as I've been learning about Webflow, I've been kind of going in and just doing it on the fly. So I'll be really interested to learn about mm. your process here. Mm. Yeah, so exactly. It's and it's 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 really crucial that you just get them foundations right. And again, some of the techniques that you'll be learning on the course is how I take inspiration. Now, obviously, a lot of you probably see the um, the um, design animation that I shared for Zihan. Z Zihan, or Z I can't I can't even pronounce the name. Apologies for that. Um, but the the design reference came from that. And then uh, Rio as well, uh, Geo, sent me um, this eye. Um, I see this eye animation that he did and I really liked it. And I was like, yeah, let's just include it because it's a little bit of Lottie and we're going to do a little bit of Lottie and then we can have a little look at, you know, the things that we can do. But it's it started from them two pieces of references. And, and really, if you look at the color palette, all of the color palette has been picked, depicted from this eye color. You know, I've looked at colors that are complement in this so i sampled the car started to look at tones that complement that and it started from that small small piece here which is actually built out you know my um my design here so it, 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 and that's how the small micro parts can really help you get through so just looking at this design and, and how it's coming together just gives me an idea when we start to move in again looking at some of the other areas of how that works as i said i think relatively you know i would you know when i'm building out things i might start moving things around and just looking at how elements be coming in uh, and that would kind of set your mind um for when you go into webflow now saying that um yes i get in there and i'm I've got an idea in my head, but then actually I get taken away on this ride of actually exploring other things. And that's what we're going to try and do today. I'm going to build this out, but then I might try and chuck a few curveballs in there and, and do some random stuff that might go to plan. It might work. It might not. But I think that's the benefit of seeing, you know, where you can go. And then sometimes where you may need to just go with a route that you were set on. Hey, Joseph, so somebody's really asking. Help us. Somebody's asking if you're using Sketch. What's the design? Before you jump into the Webflow side of things, what are you using from a design standpoint to lay out the design here? I mean, there's there's no there's no real kind of, like, you can't use this, you can't use that. You know, use what you're comfortable with. If it's Photoshop, if it's Sketch, if it's Figma, if it's XD, you know, it's, it's really important just to get into that tool early and... and um, you know, looking at the details of spacing, you know, we've, we've, I've spoke to you many times about this, the spa spacing, how you use proportion, how you look at the size, the color, imagery, you know, them, them building blocks can really help you look and understand what you should be looking for in good design. So they're just kind of some starting points to, to that question. Um, so I'm thinking let's let's jump into it. I mean, everyone ready? We all we're all ready to go. Bear with me. Um I've not prepared at all for this, so it could go horribly wrong. <laughs> but um I'm sure I'll be all right. And um yeah, let's let's get into it. Let's start. So first thing would be exporting the assets out, which I've already done all of that, and they're all exported out, which is great. Um and I'm just gonna pull up this screen. Um, I'm just going to go into my settings quickly because I forgot to upload the font because I'm a silly boy. Um, so I'm just going to quickly upload this font. Um, this might be good and just to show people we, how you do the font. Yeah. So just uploading it here. So it actually, yeah, good, 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 Paul. So some people might have issues with font, and it's really important that you watch the naming of this. So some fonts, when you bring them in, they'll actually come in the, like the same name. So like I need to make sure 
that it's the name and if you had a bold one then make sure that it says the name and the weight because sometimes that can conflict and i know i've seen people say oh this font's not working it's not pulling through could be to do with that so that's one thing to check out and that's a good good point there raymar to bring up so thanks for that so we've got our font in so we're all set and now we can jump into the designer now i'm going to be flicking back and forth from this design because i'm one eyeballing up the design and there is i call it a transition period between design and webflow i'll be making lots of different tweaks to this um fingers crossed webflow decides that it wants to load up that might be a good start uh shall i give it a refresh let's give it a refresh i'm just gonna check Whew, my heart went then i was like <laughs> no was it gonna do that to me right okay so let's get into it the first thing that i'm going to be looking at is this um this whole hero section and we're going to build it bit by bit and then we can start animating and thinking about other things but for me there's going to be a wrapper container that's going to contain all of these elements so for me i'm going to build all of the grid structure custom it's just going to be done with maybe percents and a bit of flex box and this is how i normally would build out things so we're just going to drop a div down and we're just going to call this um we're just going to call this wrapper actually so let's just call this wrapper we're going to put a width of this of 100 percent we're going to put a height of 100 percent and we're going to make sure that this is on relative and i probably will put overflow hidden because i'm likely to move things out of this screen then what we can do is we can drop two and one div in here and our apple c and apple v so we have the two columns so there's a couple of ways you could do this but we're probably going to do it with flexbox so i will grab flexbox um, and as you can see it's put the divs to the side and then what we need to do is to style these divs so i'm just going to call this coal left and i'm going to call this one coal right for column so there we go there's the two what we want to do is we want to probably put a width on this of like 30 percent to start off with and we will tweak you'll watch how i start tweaking things and moving things around and i'm going to do this all based on the screen um and what we're seeing on the screen i'm gonna to have to put that to viewpoint height sorry for some reason and then we're going to do another width of 60 percent oh no not 60 70 percent maybe that might help and then um, 100 viewpoint height so now we have our two columns set out which is great and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go in so joseph somebody's asked from why design. why haven't I'm you started with a section left a color and there's that and then for this color i'm probably just going to do this as the background there's probably no point of styling that div so um what i need to do here i'll probably layer locked more than likely, yep. We're gonna grab this layer here, get this color, and then we're gonna go to body. We're gonna go into the selector. We're not gonna give this a class. We're gonna go to the all bodies. We're gonna make sure all the bodies are gonna be that color. Beautiful, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put these in here as well. I'm gonna do that. Hey, Joseph, so that's the two quick. sections done quite nicely. I'm just having a little butcher's uh, the design. We will start off with this left-hand column. Check, check. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at the section for the eye. For me, I'm just going to drop a div in here, and this is going to contain this. So I'll probably just call this. Um, so I use this method: parent, child, and grandchild, and that's just to help you keep some uh, semantic format in the way that you're structuring all of your um, divs and columns and stuff like that and you'll see that as I start to build things out hey, hey Joseph. so with this we're going to call this so we're going to call this Lottie hey, parent there you go so there's the Lottie parent and we can just do width 100% and height we could probably give it a fixed height to be honest on this probably not 400 pixels but what I'm doing there is I've gone bigger so I can kind of gauge the size of where I want that to be I'm just moving up and down and just kind of getting a feel. That looks good. And then what I can do is I can go into here and I can get my lottie. And then I can replace. We can drop this in here. And I'm just going to put this on loop quickly. We may do some um, trigger animations with that. There's the eye. Beautiful. Really like that. 
that's why I picked it out and then what I need to do is I'm just going to put a background color on this so I haven't got that color so I'm just going to quickly pick that color and we have got that there so I've picked that color great now we can move into here and I've got that lottie parent and that's one of the reasons why I put this in that is because so we can put that in there and then what I'm going to do is probably flex this because that is not in the center hopefully there you go boom we are now in the center and that is exactly where we want to be so that's a good start and then we need to think about this spacing so there's a couple of ways you could do this you could probably put a width on this and then center that content in you could probably put some padding on there at the side I think that's probably the option I'm going to go with probably going to put some padding on it so one two three four again i'm always working in measurements of five ten fifteen twenty again just keeping some consistency and rhythm in the stuff that you're building is really important so again we're just moving around so we get to a point and then i'm again looking here and then i'm going to go back to the design it's not the same is it this is more of a square shape so again with the responsive nature it, it's not always going to be perfectly square all the time but we can try and get it like that i'd probably go with that to start with and i think potentially you know this column might be a little bit too big so we could probably bring it down 25 and then 75 and again you see how i've just tweaked it and changed it so now we've got more see that small little change that i just made there just made quite a difference um, and again, that's just about tweaking, 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 and hopefully you'll get to the point that you need. So we've got that in now. That's the lottie bit, great. We've got um, a header here. We've got um, some li little bit of um, text and a link. So again, what I'm gonna think about is, rather than placing them elements individually and then spacing them, again, I'm gonna wrap this up in like a parent, you know, contain these elements and just put them inside. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm just going to drop another div in. It is above, but I'm going to move it below. So now we have this in here, and then we can call this. Um, this was actually, I believe, it was about. So we're going to call this about, you guessed it, parent, and we're off again. So now we can put that to 100% on the width. We can probably do 100% on the height. Let's let's tweak that. It might not be wrong again. I'm just I'm just playing around. Um, I'm just building this out of scratch. So there's an effect that I want to do, and that is I want these texts to come out from a hidden div. So again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop a div in here, and I'm going to call it text hide. So we've got text hide. We're just going to give it a width of 100%, and then we're going to set that overflow to hidden, and that is really important for this kind of type of animation type. You've probably seen it a million times, um, but it's it's always a nice one to go to. And then I'm going to drop this in, head in, boom, we've got our first one. And then we can type in design. And then what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go in. I'm actually just going to Apple C, Apple V, Apple C, Apple V. So that's the three lines. Because what I want that animation to do is bring three layers as it comes in, not one, as it comes in at three. And again, we're going to be using some little techniques here. Um, and I'll explain some of the things that I'm going to be doing with this as well. So now we've got the heading in here. We could probably just go to the H1 heading tags, make sure that we do it to all of them, get rid of that, and we want to get rid of that as well. So now we've got them more in line. We can also start to apply some of our textiles. Let's make sure it's on normal. Now, what shall we do with this? Let's think about it fixed. So let's, let's, just, let's just take a step back, and this is understanding how you might prepare or change a route. So if I publish this quickly, now what we've got to think about is the responsive nature of this column here. Um, hopefully, yes, here we go. Boom. So I'm going to get this screen up. I'm just going to take it off. Let's just think about the, the responsive nature of this. You see how that, that column's getting smaller and smaller? And there is going to be a point where that text goes exactly like that. So for me, it would be one answer only if I wanted to prevent that and make a truly responsive um, format and that would be to go in here make sure we select that tag again because that's what we want to do and then we can go in here and we can put two viewpoint width three 
for let's just check it out a little bit just to make sure okay so four viewpoint width three viewpoint width and what we're doing is it's you're just giving the text a viewpoint width side and that will scale down which is again really nicely so when we start to scale that design down the text comes down with it which is what we want exactly that and then i'm going to change the height now for some reason it all works on percent uh, percent base which is strange but you know that's how it works I probably don't want it that high. I want, if we look at the design again, going back, it's a lot tighter here. We may have some issues because I've added these clipping masks. So we might have to make that a tiny bit bigger, actually now. Design, and then we go build, oh, and one more. And you got that in, that's that first bit. Then we want to do a paragraph. Let's get a paragraph in here. Boom. And then we could do this as an all paragraphs. Again, think about what you're doing, because if you're building out a lot more pages, you know, you editing something might change other things. So it's just getting that bearing to start off with. But we're going to do it on this anyway. Um, I don't need to do that. So I'm going to change the font as well. Make sure we get it in this font. Um, font size looks good to me. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste this in here. Great. Actually, I uh, no, I'm not going to give it a class. I'm still going to keep it as it is. And then what I'm probably going to do is just put some padding in there to give that space. Again, what we want to do is just look at this. So if I go here, I'm one, two, three, four, five. It's 50 pixels. That bit's much. Again, this is how that transition period works in here because we've got 30 pixels and that looks well too big. So again, I'm just going to tweak that. Now we're better. Not very happy with how this is looking at the moment, um, but I'll I'll leave that for a second. LinkedIn. Now I'm going to put LinkedIn. Is everyone okay? Rama, Rama, are they all okay? They all all anything come through? Just yeah, making no. sure we're all okay. Everything looks good. There was a couple questions earlier about why you Rayma? didn't start. Yep. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. No. That's interesting. Hello. Joseph? Raymar? Yeah, I'm not sure why you can't hear me. Technical? I'm not sure why you can't hear me there, okay. but I can I'm hear you. I'm going to carry on. Yep. Can't hear Raymar. Um, can everyone hear me? I'm just going to check. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm just checking what's going on. Um, All right, okay, cool. Sorry, guys. Just Raymar went quiet on me. I had a bit of a panic then. <laughs> so let's let's continue. Um, right, so we've dropped in our link. Let's get rid of it. Let's go on to the All Links tab. Let's just put that display on block. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move that down, I don't know, 40 pixels. Let's just have a little butchers. Looking good. And then we're going to select back onto that link. Oh, what I'm going to do is just going to change the size. 333. Three, three. We want to make sure that it's on our font. Um, don't. I want a text underline. Why is that caps? Maybe I did do it caps. Make sure that's on. Whoa, that wasn't not the font. There you go. I knew that was strange. Okay, so there's the font. So we've got the link in. We've got this about parent. Yeah, we're moving quite quickly. We're going okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm probably just going to put some padding on there. And again, let's just look at the padding here. 40 pixels. Look at the padding here. 40 pixels. Again, just building a little bit of consistency with that spacing and how you're moving elements around the page. So now we've got that element here. Let's have a little look. Looks okay. I'm still not massively happy with this. So I'm actually going to scrap this idea just for the moment because I think it's going to cause me some issues. So design, build, and animate. And then what we can do is just get in here and just go back and tweak them parameters a bit to bring that in a bit more and let's just have a little look still too much still too much but you see Raymar, you see how i'm going backwards and forwards on on things here and just tweaking as i'm going along yeah That's kind of i the process that i do 
and then what we can do now so we have our coal left and what we're going to do is we're going to look at this little element here at the bottom which is this coming soon tag so i'm going to drop another div in so we've got three divs and then we're going to call this i'm going to call this ticker parent there you go there it is again uh, and then we're going to go width 100 percent height 50 pixels i'm going to set this to absolute and all i'm going to do is just move it to the bottom so now you can see that this has come to the bottom but actually it's moved out of that area and there's only one reason that could be and that is because the position of that parent element is not set to relative and that is really important when you're moving elements around inside of other elements that parent element needs to be relative because it will be relative to that element so let's just change that and you'll see when we when we move to relative it then pops in now like that size is too big so I'm probably just gonna bring this down a touch and then I'm gonna go back I need to get my green color again I'm gonna give this a background color boom we're in on that I'm I have added it I don't know what I was doing there I'm gonna add this one so let me just add this one great and let's just add this one so i've got them to hand and so we've got this in here so that's all good and then what we're going to do is we're going to probably just drop a bit of text in here and there's no need to use paragraph or anything like that because this is kind of dummy copy that's not really going to mean anything to anyone so coming soon and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go apple c apple v apple p can't see any of that text so um, that's all down below but what we're going to do with this is we're going to give this um, a class I'm going to call this ticker T -E. and then what we're going to do with this is um, we're going to set the breaking to no wrap as you can see all of that text is moved along in a line it's not going to break it's going to stay straight so what we can do now is go back to that ticker parent I'm going to put this on flex now and I'm just going to center that in the middle and then we're going to put this on overflow hidden boom now it's clipped that text away so we have the bar inside which is clipped the text we have our side panel built out we're already moving quite well and then what we can do now is just give this a little bit of style in so I'm just going to have a little play let's so this again just checking the design was it it was yeah it was uppercase so I put it uppercase probably gonna bring the size down really small nice like that let's just have a look there you go so that's the first section built in great it's looking good I'm liking it now let's build this next section so I've just had a message from Raymar and the connection from him has dropped out so once this is done I'm gonna try and fly into the live stream and check any questions but let's just keep rolling um, and let's go so the next section here now we need to think about the position of this and, and this is underneath this layer um, so let's for me that feels automatically that it's going to be an absolute position so let's just go to the coal left check here we haven't got overflow hidden so that's that's kind of good that's what we want so we could potentially drop that panel inside of coal left because it does sit in that column left so we will do that and what we'll do actually we're not going to do this what we're going to do is we're just going to bring this out into um, this coal right here and the reason I'm doing that is so that we can build this here and this is a, a kind of a technique that I use for when it when you're building out different things break things apart into all digestible chunks and um, rather than trying to worry about all at once so here we're just going to call this um, I'm going to call this coal and I'm going to call it coal news and it's going to be the same so I believe the width was 25 percent height is 100 viewpoint height I think that's right is it 25 it is 25 that looks really small but that doesn't matter it's all good 
and then what we're going to do is we are going to look at what is inside of this so we have a hero image here oh actually i forgot about this little drop of text up here so let's just quickly do that so let's go back to that let's just drop another text block in here we've got our text here i'm going to claim it about and then we're just going to go and give this a class of um txt i'm going to call it turn i know but yeah i'm going to call it turn uh, and then i'm going to go absolute so we've got that absolute which is great and then what we're going to do now is we can do a bit of rotate so we're going to go to transform rotate and we're going to spin it around 90 percent and then if i pin that to the top with the absolute positioning we can start to control 40 pixels we know let's just check that alignment because it looks weird so it's not 40 and there is some weird is that when you rotate elements i can't explain exactly what it does but it does it does slightly change the way that the elements move so just need to be cautious of that when you are doing that a b o u t great so i've got that in there and now i can start to style this drop in our color we can go to Silas. we can keep it at 14 i think and yeah i'll go with that i think that's that's good enough oh it was uppercase sorry forgive me two little things actually i forgot that i normally um that i normally do uh, and i do it right now so let's change that little bit and now we've got uh, minus two pixels I knew it was going to be like that, and I'm going to have to bring this down to 52. Great. It's kind of in the position that we want. I'm happy with that. So now we've got that in place. Um, I'm actually going to, I did write it down here actually. Here you go. Um, just two little things that I normally, or one thing that I always add on, which is this WebKit fonts moving. Um, it's just just makes the fonts a lot crisper we can just drop an embed in to do that um, open some style brackets close some style brackets and then we can drop in the body tag and you'll just slightly see the font just crisp up a little bit just a tiny bit so if we look at it now we you won't really see too much difference but let's see when I publish that if we can see the difference you just see it just takes a little bit off the font and it just feels a lot crisper now um, so that's something quite nice that I always use, always put that into my sites. So, right, okay, let's get on to this other section that we were talking about. So we've got this column here, and what I can do now is just have a little, let's have a little look to see what we've got here. So right, I'm going to grab this color. Da -da -da -da. I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to give it the background color. We're going to go in here, we're going to add that, create fantastic just what we need so now we're going to make sure that this is on relative and then we're going to do a pretty much the same process for the um, Lottie part we're going to drop in a div we're going to call this image parent and we're going to give this a width of a hundred percent and we're going to give it a height of 200 pixels just to start off with um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put the overflow to here then I'm going to put it on relative it doesn't really need to be on relative but I just felt like it um, so yes and then we can drop another div inside and this is going to be called um, just image and this is going to contain the image and you may be thinking why has he created a div inside of a div um, and that's going to be for effect that we're going to do so all will be revealed shortly. Uh, so let's drop an image in here. Dun, dun, dun. Image in. Let's put set that to cover. Center. No repeat. Let's just have a little look at that. All right, it looks a bit weird because the 25% is actually contain, um, being referenced from this. So once I hopefully drop it in here, we should be all good. So we've got that image in. Does feel a little bit too small so again what i'm looking at here is the alignment of these two elements so i'm going to keep bringing it down hopefully that is right there you go 
So we've got that in there. I think 320 is, is good. That's lining up for me. Perfect. Right. So then we've got these little elements, which again, let's just call this news parent width 100%. Height will leave for the moment. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in. So I drop in another lottie there. Yeah, I'll drop in another lottie there. Let's do that. So I'm going to drop in the lottie there. Um, so let's get that div. Where did that div go? Um, there. Where was it? New parent. There it is. Lottie goes in. Choose. So I'm just going to look at this because it could be big. Ooh, we've got two eyes. Um, and then I'm just going to give this a class size. And let's just go 40 pixels. I just want to see what that looks like. OK, it's too small. And this is just, just the 80. 80 is still too small. 100 pixels. Right, 100 pixels. So actually, we are probably going to have to create another div. So I'm not a link div. Sorry, my mistake. Um, we're just going to put another div in here. And then we're going to drop this inside of this because then we can um, actually give this um, we can give this a background color. So again, here we're going to call this. I'm just going to call it like BG. Classes are going to get a bit random here because I'm trying to think quick, move quickly. I will obviously take a little bit more time when I'm doing this. Um, it wasn't that color, it was that one. And I just need to check how that's looking right. And then what we need to do with this is uh, we need to give this a size. We did give this a width of 100 pixels. So if we give this a width of 100 pixels, that's oh, 100% there, 100 pixels. There you go. So now we've got 100 pixels. We've got our square. Great. I feel like the square is just a tiny bit too big. So I'm just going to just gonna drop it down a bit just for that space. But actually, we're in the wrong space. So I will go with 100, <laughs> back and forth and forth. Right, so we're at 100. And what I'm going to do is we're going to give this some padding. So 1, 2, 3, 20. What do we reckon? What do we reckon? That is the question. So if I go here, let's just see what it is. 1, 2, 3, 4. It is 4, 40 pixels. But I feel 40 pixels might be too much. But let's just go with it. No, it's definitely going to be too much. Mm, I have to see, but let's go, let's go with 20 to start with. So we've got 20 in here. Let's just move that. And then let's go 20 top, 20 bottom. Have a little look. OK, so that's that. Now what we can do is we can give this a boulder on the bottom. So go to boulder, boulder bottom. Perfect. So there is our boulder in there, and that's looking really, really good. And then we have a little bit of text and a title. So I'm going to drop in a bit of text here, and we will probably have a problem with this. So what I'm going to do is put it on flex. And lo and behold, this text has now moved into the position that I want it to, which is great. And then what I can do is center that like that. And our text is in the middle. Nice. See, with a few small clicks of um, Flexbox, we will really be able to change the position and layout of that quite easily. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. Again, so we've got our text here. I'm just called the, the Build Master. That's very unique. Build master. So that's in there. And then we just call this um, news txt. And again, we're going to go in. We're going to style it. We're going to change that to that. Have a little look. Boom, boom, boom. The build master's in there. Let's pump it up a little bit. Let's go there. Let's make sure it's on normal. Oh, it's on merry weather again. I've got to stop doing that. And now we're there. Um, so the easiest thing we're going to do is probably just rather than putting padding on each of these elements, let's just put it on one element, thinking about how we might save the use of excessive C CSS for sure. So let's just one, one, two, three, four, five, 15 pixels. And there you go. That's that's a nice space. I'm going to copy this link. I'm going to drop that link into there. Um, 
going to drop this link into here and I knew that might happen. Let me just quickly adjust. No. So just thinking. Right. So what I'm going to do now, actually, because of the because I've got to get the link in and I've got the flex, but I'm just going to drop another div in and I'm going to put that in there and that in there. And that should now sort out the position of that element. There you go. So that did sort out that position. It would, it, I think sometimes with flex, you need to make sure that you contain certain block elements because flex is just moving them elements. Um, and where they were individual elements, it was getting, you know, deferred down and pushed. So now we've got that in, that's that's all good. And then what we can do is just call this a, a probably content parent. Uh, and actually, I'm going to call it news content parent. So we've got the news content parent in. Great. And then we can probably just put this on flex, vertical, in the middle. There is some space. So let's grab this link because we've got that. And then we're just going to call this um, news link. I'm going to get rid of, of this and that we bring it to the middle exactly where we need to be. And then we can change the color of this. So we colored this. And then I'm probably just going to make this one slightly smaller. So look, great. So that's the first bit of that in that's all good we've got this first block in i think now what we can do is we can transition this over so we go to our coal left which is here we can drop this in it's going to look super weird um, do we drop this in do we not drop this in so i'm just going to explore here what i might do with this so if i set this to absolute no there is padding and that is not what we want If I then change this to 100%, that will now move into its space, which is great. So it's inside of that. And then um, we bring it right to the top and just change the Z index there to two. So that's now above. We've got that module in. That's great. Let's just have a little think about that text again. Let's just plonk this in. See, it's just dropped here. Beautiful, just what we want. So that's all set, and that's how we've easily transitioned into that next section with that copy. And then what I can do is probably just give this, I'm going to give it a combo class, or, you know, it might be duplicating it. Um, I'm just going to call this brown, uh, and then we can change it to brown. And then let's just have another little look, all looking good. Now, this one is in a slightly different position to the other one, and that is due to the copy. So I'm going to try and eyeball this up and a little trick way so I can see. I'm going to bring the opacity down. And now I'm just looking at these elements. Now I can see the elements. So I can just tweak. I'm just coming in a little bit. And this needs to come up. Boom. And they're in, in exactly the same position. So that's a good little trick there. Just use the opacity so you can see other layers if you need to get to them and then all we can do with that is apple c apple v and now we've got another block in and so that section is built so now we've got that section great what we need to do is we need to move this behind so i'm just gonna go zero and I'm actually rethinking and I'm rechanging now because now I've thought about this. Actually, this needs to come outside of this um, and it needs to be sitting behind it. So we can bring this to 25%. It's the same height and it's just here now. It's underneath this now and that is where we need it. And then obviously we've got that little bump that we need to put onto that. Um, and again, this might change one, two, three, four. It might change, it might change. So let's just see how we get. So now we've created that layer uh, and that looks really nice. Um, so it's coming together quite well. And then let's just get this final section in. I'm just looking at time and then get this, this section in here. Um, we have got this section here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build this out. Um, Raymar, if you could just give me an update. Is everyone still cool? Are they happy to, you know, still go a bit longer? Because I think we're probably looking at, you know, with some animation stuff, 
um, probably a bit longer. Right, okay. Raymond's giving me the all good. He's he's messaging me now, so we're we're uh, we're communicating other ways now because he can't actually talk to me. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna build the rest of this out, and then we're gonna start looking at some of um some of the animations and how that Raymond's just gonna filter in some questions. Um, so I'll try and relay them as we go through. So let's build this section. Again, same principles here. We're thinking about how we're going to block these sections up and how they're going to work. So is that one section? We bring that in. That's going to be wrapped into a div here. So right, okay. So now we've got our coal right. We're going to drop a div in. We're going to select the coal right. We're going to make sure that this is on flex, center, center. There she is, right in the middle, just where we want her to be. I'm going to call her content parent, beautiful. And then what we can do is we can start to filter in this text. Now, I'll just check my sizes, 22, 18. Okay, that's a different size, but I'm just going to probably copy that. For the, for the sake of speed, I'm going to just try and do a few more things, a little bit more ad hoc. I'm going to copy that in. So there's March. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna give this a width, probably 50 pixels to start with. Could be fixed, could be fixed, again, depending on how you want that content to move inside there. Do you want it to be fully responsive or do you want it to be um, more adaptive and change more rigid? So that, again, there's things to think about there. And we, we may change and we may look at um, how that might work. So I really want to bring that text in then text hide block. So I'm going to try it with a large version now. So I'm going to drop in that. We've got that class, text hide. And I'm going to drop another header in here. And I'm going to call this um, H1 for large. And we're going to pump the size up. And we're going to call this design. And it looks like it's doing the same thing. So I just really want to show you this direction. Let's just have a look at the size of that. Kind of good. So we have got a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it in the one. So let's just do it in one direction. I would have liked to done both, but it's, it's, this font's not particularly good because it's got the tails and they're, they're actually getting cut off and clipped. And you need that box to be quite tight. But here we can, we can get away with it. I think this could be a bit bigger. If we look at design, direction. Cool, we're kind of there. That's great. So we've got that in, and then we had we do have another link. So again, because we've started to prepare these elements, we now they're a lot easier to drop in. And then we have another div which I am going to drop here. We've got the coal right. Go back to flex because it's the wrong. We don't want it horizontal, we want it vertical. Now we've got it vertical, and I'm just going to call this uh, image. We've already got an image parent. I'm going to give it image parent. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to call it image parent LG. On the call right, we are on relative. That's 100%. Maybe that is right. Content parent. Yep, yep, yep. I can probably get rid of it. I don't want the height yet. I don't want the so that is strange that is going outside of that content parent and that is because it's not inside of that so i'm going to bring that image parent inside uh, the inside the content parent so outside of it when i was putting it to 100 percent, it was just it was going past the point and it needs to sit inside so if we look at the div this div is containing these elements and that's what we want uh, and then what we can do here is probably just 400 pixels, 350, I'm just getting at the moment. And I'm going to try another div in. And that overflow is hidden. And we're going to call this image one. And we're going to give it width 100%, height 100%. Put that in there, that's all good. And what we can do is we can drop our image in. And the image that we had is that one. Cover, center, no repeat. Let's have a look. 
Okay, it looks a bit weird at the moment, but we've got some stuff to do. So with this image parent, what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably just going to use relative position top to move this up under that text because that's what we're looking to do to create that under that text. And let's just get that right. So I'm just probably going to bring up another five, five pixels. The index, this is wrong. So I'm going to go into link, all links, put it on relative. I'm just going to increase the Z index to make sure that them elements are above. And again, if I just change that to relative, that above, we are all good. Let's go back into look nearly there nearly there we're getting there we're getting there it's looking good let's just bring this 400 it wouldn't be the perfect square <laughs> it's going to be tricky to get that in like that but again this is where you're going to have to make adjustments depending on what you've got it's kind of there and then the other little bit of code that i brought in so that image is actually put a, a multiply on. Let's use this little bit of code. Image parent LG. Hopefully this is right. And this is the element that I need to target to do that. So we've dropped in background blend mode, multiply, and mix blend mode, multiply. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to target that image. So it might be that I target image parent lg no no luck so that's a good start and then try image one no no luck that's not good because normally it works image blend maybe oh, this this up this multiplier effect works really strangely sometimes it's not seeming to have any of it at the moment Let's just try it again. Why are you not working? Image parent LG and it's, it's not doing it, is it? No, 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 no. Okay, so I need to have a little think here quickly, but I'm gonna move on. Let's not panic about that at the moment because that's not important. Um the other way, quickly, let's just quickly do it like this. Well, uh, I knew something would fail on me. Um, I mean, this is really poor. I wouldn't do the practice of doing, but um, let's just get rid of that. I'm going to get as big as I can. I'm going to do a nice little screen grab. Boom. So we've screen grabbed that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to one of my tools and I'm going to do PNG compression. Now another little really important thing, make sure that you compress all of your images. It really, really does help with speed. Make sure that they're the right size, make sure that they're low as possible um, file size that you can get them at and that will really help. If you look at that, it's 802, well too big. I would have changed the name, but let's look at the compression. As you can see here, it's starting to compress that image down. And you'll sh it will show you how much we've saved. Down 69%. So we had 803 KBs, and now it is 250. So again, just a nice little trick and a good habit. Once you get all your um, assets outside of Webflow, make sure that you compress them. Moving, go to our downloads. Let's grab that image, Do -do -do. which is here. So that was, that was one way um, of doing it. And the multiplier, again, I don't know. I've, I used it literally on another project and it worked fine. So uh, I don't want to dwindle too much. So we're in, we've got that in. Um, and then we have our um, Y column that sits at the bottom. So we've got that here. Did I only save out the arrow? It did. And the reason I did that is because what we're going to do is we're not going to drop a container in. Apple see that, sorry. We're going to drop in another div. And this is going to be called BTN parent. There you go, it's there again. And we're going to give it a width of 50 pixels. All right, 50 pixels. Overflow hidden. 
we're going to go relative. Actually, we're going to go absolute. Mind me. And then we're going to move it up one uh, notch. <laughs> this time again from the one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. I think we've got to remember how, how much we brought that up. So we brought it by 85. And we've got, we go 95 on that. I'm going to give it a border. Let's check the borders there. Beautiful. And then we're going to border radius 100%. That's now in there. We're going to set this to flex. Get that on flex again. You know, see, it, there's a you know continuous rhythm here with how I'm putting things together. And, um, and once you start getting through that first little part, you obviously know that things start to come a lot easier and a lot quicker. So what we can do now is go into our images, drop that baby in the middle. HDPI 7 is too small. I'm just going to control it from here. So there is that. And we're going to call this arrow on relative. And again, we will look at reasons why. So we've now got this section. I'm really, really not happy with how this is um, sitting. So I'm just going to publish and I'm just going to look in the actual view. And again, this is something that I do. OK, because we can now see a little bit more of that screen now. 50% is too big. And I think the copy is a touch too big. So I'm going to bring that down. I'm also going to look at this content parent and I'm going to bring it to, I might put this as a fixed width. So if I go to like 400, let's go 350, just have a look. Wow, that's small. <laughs> let's just go a bit bigger and let's look. Great. So now I'm feeling like, it does feel like at the moment, the ratio of these two areas to this area feels quite fast. Um, and it's, it just feels too big. So I might put this back up to 30%. Turn this down. And remember to change our coal side, which is the one that is at the side. And let's just have a look. Yeah, I think we're going to have to compensate with that. I think we're going to have to let these elements be a little bit bigger. Um, and then that will that will make that space feel not so empty. Um, so let's just make this a bit bigger. 450. Once I've built this out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold fire on this bit and I'm just getting to some animation stuff. Um, Raymar, if you can let me know if there's any questions. Why Flexbox instead of Grid for layout? Um, that is a good question. So, again, it's evaluating on what you're building and the reasons why you would want to use CSS Grid to Flexbox. Now, I've used Flexbox a lot more than I do CSS Grid. I think that's probably because I haven't fully um, dived into it, but I think use what you're comfortable with. I think the reason why I build um, with Flexbox is I just like the control that I can put on, um, the, the, the control that I can put on the elements. And you can probably do the same with CSS Grid. So it's really just dependent on the design. You know, CSS Grid is great for mosaic kind of styles, lots of offsets. Um, but if you're building kind of traditional, you know, straight line grids, Use Flexbox, build build your stuff with Flexbox if you want. And then there could be elements inside that you use Grid with. Um, and again, this is just all dependent. There's, there's there's no right or wrong answer on that. So don't be scared to, to, to try and Testing see what you can again. come up with. Can you hear me, Joe? So we've got this last section in. And that's a lot better. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. I think this, again, look at me constantly critiquing this space. Like this is this is actually smaller. This is bigger and that is smaller. So what we want to try and do is we're going to grab this content parent and we're just going to put one, two, three, four, five. Eyeball it up. Five was too much for sure. I'm just going to bring it up and then we need to move our button. And then we can get on some animating and then hopefully um, we could potentially finish out that last bit as well. I'm just going to bring this down a touch more. Let's go down. Um, I'm still not happy with that spacing. I'm just going to bring that down a touch more. 
good. We're in. Right, I'm, I'm happy with that. I think we'll feel like we've executed design to the level that we need to execute with. Yes, it is not identical to design, the design, and that is the whole reason of that transition period that you have from design into build, where things will change a little bit and you can make additional tweaks depending on what you're seeing on the screen. So let's get into some animation, and then if we get time, we can have um, a little look at that last section. Um, so they would like to see, uh, so people want to see the code snippets you use. Okay, yeah, cool, we can have a look at that after. Um, so we'll have a look at that after. Um, so yeah, let's get into some animation. So let's have a little look at the design. Let's just have a breather. Um, that was a good, good 30, 40 minutes of me rambling on and hopefully you've kind of just getting an idea of how things are coming together. But let's just have a look at the design in situ and think about what we want to do. So we've got two panels. Um, we've got panel one, panel two. We've got these elements here. How does this image come in? Maybe the image comes in up, the text swips in, fade, fade. This one first, then the one behind comes behind. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, can I, let's go like that. Right, that's, that's, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm setting myself up for change. change. Let's see. So we're going to select the body. We're going to go to the interaction panel. We're going to go to a page trigger. I'm going to do a page load. And again, with everything that I do here, I'm going to really be descriptive on what I'm doing. Some of the projects that I build out can have, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 different animations in. Um, and boy, it gets a bit messy. So I've probably said that before, but I'll say it again. Um, so let's, 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 let's call this well. So we're going to call this um, intro hero low. Let's do what's the spelling of that. Most designers can't spell. I can't spell. So um, <clears throat> nothing new there. Right. Okay. So first section. Let's grab our cone new. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a move. We're going to move and we're going to go minus 100%. Now, there was, as you can see, still not fully out. And that is the reason with that there. So if I get rid of that margin, it goes. It's fully out, out of the screen. Maybe if I try a padding might work so the padding works it's not pushed it back in it's moving it inside of that box for hopefully that is that's going to work so what i'm going to do i'm going to go back to that interaction and we're going to go here we're going to set this on the initial this is the initial state that we want it to be and then we're going to do a move and if i bring this to zero percent right, it's not moving out so a couple of things that we can do here because it's still not moving out because of this. If I don't do I've got the 40 there. So if I, the thing is, if, if I get rid of that 40, it removes it out. But when I bring it back in, it's not going into the position that I want it to. Um, so I'm just trying to think of the best way, but I'm going to kind of just probably fudge it and then bring it in. So what I can do, simple. Let's just do the opacity. Yeah, oh yeah, Raymar said you could move it to 100%. So you could do that. You could just keep moving it back. Or even better, you could just go 100 viewpoint width and that will completely bring it out. And we'll need to bring that one to viewpoint width as well. I do find that when you do viewpoint width, things move a lot quicker because I'm not sure why, but it just does. So let's just have a look at some some um, easing options and what we're going to go for. I want something going to be like liquid, very smooth. I'm really liking this smooth kind of animation style. I can't see it that uh, in out and shine is probably not what I'm going to go for in out quartz. So let's pump that up one just yeah that let's start off with that so that's just a base that's literally just a base we've got the opacity let's 
Um, no, I'm going to leave the passive. We don't do that because we've we've done that now. The hundred of few point width has moved that right out the way, so we don't need to hide it now because it's gonna it's gonna be out the way. It's not in that situ. Then we can do the left again. Good few point width. And what we can do here is we can move. We can go zero few point width. We can make sure that it's on in out quartz. In out court, and I'm going to do out court actually. I'm going to change it to out court, not in out court. Out court, uh, out court, great. 1.8, 1.8, and then I'm just going to delay this back one a little bit. Oh, beautiful. The way that that set in there is really nice. You just get that little second peak in there, which is, which is exactly what we need. Great. So now we don't we want to hide these elements here. Um, and we also can we can bring in some of these other elements. So let's just have a look at how we could further this um, and take it a step further. So with that Lottie parent, I think we could put that on overflow hidden. Got the text, got that, got that. Perfect. Right. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that page load and I'm going to um select that lottie let's just look at that i just just having a quick look sorry i'm just just getting my bearings okay that was strange so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to do a size and i'm going to do a width of a hundred uh, zero percent to start with and then we're going to do a size again and we're going to do 100 percent Woo, lovely. And then we're going to do our out call and we're going to do 1.2 and we're going to just delay this 1.6. That wasn't slow enough. So we just need to give that a bit of pause. One, two, two. Beautiful. Let's just see how that looks. Beautiful. And I'm, I'm actually going to slow that right down, I think. Really slow that down. Beautiful. See that just coasts that last little bit and it just sets that last bit of movement really nicely. And then what we can do with these, we're going to do a little shift at 40 pixels over to this way. And we're going to move. We're going to change this to one second. And we're going to put it on a nice eight out to court. I'm going to bring it back to zero. Capacity, bring the opacity down. Zero. Oh, bring that to zero. Capacity. And we're going to go on um, an ease. Just going to bring that nice and slow. Let's change that to 1.2. And one. Beautiful. So now that, see that movement is just starting to build now. We're really just stepping up. We're just moving each element. Again, one, two, three, four. And it's very repetitive now. Very repetitive. So now zero. Point four. Point eight. I believe it was one point eight. I didn't need actually. I didn't need so that there. I can do that there, and then we can actually change that to one point two. I just got my timings mixed up a bit there. One point eight. Capacity. It's going to be a hundred percent on there. Did it. Ease. And I'm just going to have to go here and set the opacity for that paragraph as well. And then let's just have a look. Let's have a look again. It's kind of good. Feel like feel like these elements are just going to be a tiny bit slower. So I'm just going to put this to 1.4 and then I'm going to put this on 1.2 and then it's just beautiful. And then the link and uh, a quick quick kind of technique that we could um, use and um, which I use is just a repeat method so we know that we need a move and an opacity duplicate select it change target move to the link select that onto the start of the animation again we can just duplicate change target link and then pop that on there change it to 1.6 and there we go we've quickly 
created that and and when you're doing really really long staged animations that's a really good technique and you'll learn a lot more about that in the course so as we look in beautiful i'm just going to just going to quickly just check this live yeah i really like that movement that movement was super slick super nice yes Paul, it will be clonable, um, so don't worry. Um, okay, and then let's move on to the next bit. So we're going to do a little looped animation here. I'm going to go back to the body. We're going to get our coming soon text. We're going to go here. We're going to do a page load. We're going to start animation. We're going to call this um, coming soon text loop. Oh, loop. Loop. Let's try that again. And then we're going to move, set the initial position, 0%. And then we're going to move across 100%, which is too much, 2, 3, 4. Let's do 50%. And then we're going to just crank this up to like 20 seconds. And then I'm going to do a move again to trigger it. Um, back the other way. Do I need to trigger it back the other way? Yes, I do, which is going to be... Um, so once it goes... Zero again. Oh, I hate when it does that. Zero percent. Oh, go away. Zero percent. Right, great. Um, keep it on linear as well. With these kind of movements, I'd keep it on linear. And that's moving. Nice and smooth. Um, probably just put a pause in here. Two seconds. And then one second on that. And then if I go to loop, that should loop. So there you go. So now we've got that little bit of ticker tape kind of effect. And I'm not finished. I'm not finished with this intro animation. There is still a lot more we can do with this. I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to grab this ticker and you guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this down now out of the frame. 100%. Move here. 0%. Out quote. 1.8. Delayed up by 8. Let's have a look. Beautiful. Worked really, really nicely, that. I'm quite happy. A um, few other elements. We've got the about capacity. Bring that down. And then, I don't know, somewhere in here, probably once the Lottie parent is done, we'll do an opacity. We're doing ease. So there's something that I want to bring up to you now, which is really important. So at the moment, as you can see, all of these are, are selected elements. Now, if I were to copy this onto another page, it would probably break selected element and class. Now, if I put it on class, it will make sure that when I copy this or move it or transfer it, it's going to stick. It's going to hard bake into that. So there is great value in adding class. So if I want to duplicate this animation and put it on another page, make sure that your elements are all selected to class. So every single one of these has to be class but also bear in mind that once you trigger the class if there's any other elements on that page that have that class they could be affected and that is where you need to start creating combo classes and um, where you would uh, create a combo class just for that animation and again there's techniques that you're going to be learning inside of the course that will show you that so that's just a nice little point here so we've got this um We've got this intro animation now. I'm I'm gonna push it. I'm gonna I'm gonna push it a bit further. I think we can push this even further now. Um we're gonna get a bit crazy, but hey ho. So we've got the coal new here, and we've got the coal left. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna introduce these first elements, then it's gonna move. So we're gonna have to change these timings quite drastically. So I'm gonna start with uh, let's go with three seconds. Oh, not that. Sorry, 1.8. Let's go to the delay on three seconds. And then let's just whittle this back down. So we're going to go back down again. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.8. 2.
2.2. I think there was actually there was a bigger bigger pause, wasn't there? So it was a 2.2, and then it's a 2, and then it's a 1.8, and then it is a 6. That still might not be enough time for what I'm thinking inside of my head. So that now pulls that um, element. And what we're going to do now is we're going to really play around with these properties. I'm going to grab the left curl. I'm going to do a size. I'm going to do a width. Zero cent. And you see what happened there straight away. Do you see that that box moved? We've moved that coal left to, the, to that size. And what we're going to do here is we're going to bring this back in. I'm just going to drop this off because I'm now going to think about another animation that we're going to do with this. And this is literally just as I've started building this out. So we know that, that coal left was 25%. Or was it 30 percent was 30 percent so now we're back in that position so all we're doing is just animating that that position which is great so we've got that and we probably put it on our out quote and we'll probably do one second bump it up because i really like that animation type beautiful and then what we can do is we're going to grab the coal right and we're going to do pretty much the same, but we're going to slightly do different now. So we're going to grab the size. We're going to do the size 100%. 100% is what we need. And uh, let's just go here. Why? Just having a little look. Why that 70? So I'm, what I'm trying to achieve here is I want them boxes to move over um, as we as we scroll in. So it starts off with that centerpiece. And then it moves over. For some reason, there seems to be something here. Oh, size. And then if I go size with 70%, let's just, that did a weird movement there, didn't it? Um, so, what I need to think about is, so I'm thinking about the sizing here. So, we've got um, left column going from 0 to 25%. So let's just have a think about that. So and it goes to 30%, sorry. And then we've got this one moving. So the move, this needs to... So I think we might be able to control it through that. So if I get rid of crawl left, I'm just, I'm just exploring here. I'm just, I might scrap this idea totally. So... Um, in fact, I probably am going to scrap it because I feel like it's going to take me a little bit more time to work that one out. So let's just see. Uh, Cole left. Delete. Let's just. So we're back here. So what we're going to do is I do want that element to sit in the middle. That's the thing that's bugging me. So I do want that. So if I bring this to 100%, still. Still not in the middle, is it? So that's a weird one. 100 view point width. No, that's not doing anything. Yeah, so I want to get this to sit in the middle, but because we've got this column here, it's it's it's, it's not going to. So uh, it's not a true representation of what we need to do. So what we'd need to work out is removing that column, getting this to sit in the middle, and then that transition. But I, I feel like that's just going to be a bit too much. So what I'm going to do, yeah, you could do a hide and show. Good call. That was very good to remind me of that. Um, let's just check this animation quickly. All right, we're still in. So that might be. So let's just try what Raymar said. Cole left, hide and show, hide it. There you go. Thank you very much for reminding me about that. So we're going to hide that column to start with. And hide and show is something I use a lot as well. Um, and then we're going to put that back to flex. So and there's a quick jump there. Um, so what we need to do is column left. Can we do the size now? Let's try the size, 0%. Let me go to the column, size with 100%. Oh, no, what am I doing? 30%. Let's try it again. Let's oh, quint. 
0.8. I'm just conscious of time. There's the movement we wanted. There is the movement that we wanted. Fantastic. Raymar, you are a lifesaver. I totally forgot about that. But again, um, in the moments, so I'm just going to put this to 100%. Yes, there we go. So now it's sitting in the middle. That's exactly what we wanted. We're going to create this really nice transition where these elements start in the centre, move over, and, and, and get this feeling that they're being pushed by the columns. This is exactly what we're doing. And then we're going to go to the size property here. And we're going to go back to 70%. We're going to go to a out quartz, 1.8. Have a look. Need to. Right, so we've got that in there. What I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to. If I pause this, it's just going to. All right, okay. So we're in the center, moving to the side, just what we want. I'm going to pause this even more. We're going to pause this to like one second. And then what we can do is start animating these elements in. So we're going to do exactly the same elements that we had last time. We're going to do a move and an opacity. Again, rethinking about them animations that we've already created. We're going to duplicate that. We're going to change target. We're going to go to there. We've got that one. We're going to pop that one there. Bring this here. We're going to duplicate. Change target. It's somewhere. There it is. We're going to go up. Um, we're probably going to do this at zero. That is going to be the start. Right, and then it moves. Great. Um, let's just... Okay, that's moving. Great. Um, any more coming in? Okay. Just seeing... Just seeing that there is a little bit of running slow issues. I'll just hopefully carry on. Um, okay, carry on. Going to move this tech down 100%. Not $100, we're going to move it down 100%. Um, and then we're going to move up. I'm going to probably finish on this bit. And then what I will do for you guys is I will build out the rest of this template um, because I think, you know, I've gone through quite a lot. There you go. That's working nicely. And then we're going to do the same with paragraph and move, duplicate, change target, link, pop it on there. Again, duplicate. Change target, pop on the link, move it back to this section. It's going to be a 1.4. Beautiful. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to select that image. Um, I'm going to select that image. And I'm going to go for something that's. So I'm going to bring this down 100 viewpoint height. And there's so much more that I could probably do to this, but this is just giving you a little flavor. Um, and then we go move zero viewpoint height. Get that out court going. Let's go for two seconds on that. Let's see them columns move too soon. Five. Right, kind of a little bit longer, six. Um, we've still got this element that we need to animate in. So simple, just going to do a simple pass it on that one. And then we do go to set and we do opacity here. Eased one second. And then we're going to change that to 0.8. And then what we can do is now we can follow this on. So 1.8. Two. So I'm just joining this up to that first part of the animation. But you see how I broke that down? I just broke it down bit by bit. 2.2. Uh, 2.4. It's fingers crossed. 2.6. Raymar, can you give me an update on how the connection's going? 2.8. And then to finish off with 
three, oh, three, and then all good. Okay, connection good. Everyone still happy? Does uh, we we um, we still got enough people on here? Are they still interested in finding out more? Do we want to continue this? Raymar, if you could just let me know. Thirteen watching, Paul. Um, does everyone want to just drop a comment in? If they're all good, they still want to carry on. I can do a little bit more or I can wrap this up and we can start asking some questions, maybe getting on to some other things. Okay, still getting some drops, but that's going to happen, I think. Um, let's, let's, I'm just waiting for Raymar. Sorry, guys, there's two seconds. Looks good, though. Okay, so let's just... Let's just see what we put together. They said, keep going. We'll keep going. Love it. Okay. So we've built out all of this animation. We had to let's just, just take a step back before we start diving into other things. We've done a lot of timed animation here. First, we worked out how the side panels were going to come in. Then I had a bit of a brainwave and I was like, oh, I've got this really nice idea how this could start and how this brings in. And then it moves these grids. Raymar come in, saved my day. I forgot about this, the, the removing display, hidden, hide and show. And let's just have a little look at how this looks. Right, okay, so I've seen a few things that are wrong there, massively. Uh, something's happened there on my um, section here, which I probably know why. So let's go to coal left, hide and show, hide and show. It needs to be on that, I think. Let's just, I put it on flex on that coal. Yeah. So what we need to do here is we've got coal left and then coal new. So we need to stage this a bit more. So that's, that's why that was wrong. And then what we can do is 2.2 .2 on that. And let's just have a look. Yeah. There we go. Um, that looks good. I'm just going to publish. So we're all set. I've got, oh, I've still got some cold tea. You know, us Brits love the tea. So let's pop that open. I'm going to, beautiful. Really, really happy with that. There's still things that I would probably tweak. Let's just have another look. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, so things that I noticed, what am I looking at? So what am I looking at here? Mm. Image section here, I think I'd like a little bit more impact to the way that this image pops in. So I'm going to grab that image parent. I'm actually going to do a little, little scale here. I'm going to get rid of the padlock here and I'm going to do a 1.2. So I'm going to stretch it that way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to that part. We're going to do a scale. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to put this on a one. We're doing it on an ease. Probably bring it up a touch. And then I'm going to just change this speed a bit. I want this a bit more snappier, I think. Let's just bring that scale. I didn't see that at all because my screen was lagging. So I'm just going to pop that in here. And yeah, that's a lot nicer now. See the little the little stretch on the image. I think we can see that a little bit more. Just that little bit of scale that I put there. It's very subtle, but I, th I think we could put a bit more. So let's just increase this, so we can really see that that scale come through. And it will create a really nice kind of lush, elastic kind of effect. Yeah. That was great. Okay, so I believe the render's not coming through that well on my side, guys. Um, share the link. So I'm going to share this link now with Raymar. So I'm just going to quickly pop open Facebook. <laughs> and I'm going to drop this in. And I'm going to give Raymar the link. There you go, dude. So Raymar's got the link. We can jump back in. <laughs> So next bits, next bits to think about. So what are we going to think about next? Shall we look at this panel? So this coal new panel, and we can definitely get hold of this. Now I'm thinking, if we can hover, 
Should we do a hover? Hover could be nice for this. Just pops out. So let's uh, let's do a hover. If it changes, I can change it to a click, and I'll show you how we can do that quite simply. So we're going to go here. News. Slide. Hover. And then what we're going to do is we're going to think about these elements. So I don't want to see this because this is not what's starting. So we're going to go go percent set to initial move up uh, move. I'm going to do an opacity. Raymar, are we still going okay with the screen? Is it coming back? Is it okay? He's here. Um, I'm going to put that on one second. See what Raymar's saying. Two six. We good? Good. Great. Okay, so we've got an opacity on that image to start with. I'm going to step it up already straight away. Get that image parent, which I was speaking about earlier. We're going to do a scale. We're going to pump this up to 1.2. We're going to do a scale here. We're going to go like that and we're going to bring it back down. We're going to do a nice ease. Probably put this on a, like three seconds. See how we get that look. See that movement? Beautiful. So we're going to just delay this a little bit. So. Point two, and we've got our elements inside. So we could we could really go for this and, and step this up by inside of each of these parents. You animate them elements in, but I think we're going to do it. We're going to do it block by block because I think that will be uh, an easier thing to do. One, two, three, four. I'm going to move them along four. And then we're going to move zero and up quad at 1.8. And there's that movement. I'm going to put opacity on it. Again, everything's consistent here. What I'm doing, everything is following a pattern. Um, we're doing ease. One second. In the delay, this is selected on the the nav parent, and this will actually do both of them. We don't want to do both of them; we want to individually do one. And this is where the combo class will come in handy. So, what we're going to do? We've got two elements here. Now, the way that you need to prepare this is make sure that you do all your necessary styling on that element. Make sure it's sound, and then when you're ready, just do a simple thing like first, and then second that is now going to help us be able to do that and again if we wanted to copy that animation and trigger it over on different pages that was why we would want to um give them separate combo classes as well as um being able to stage the animation so if we go back to hover now we click on this we need to redo that now because it is on the parent and see that's it see now we've got the second here which is what we want go here now we've got first now we can just quickly select this duplicate change target boom pop that on now get that duplicate change the target again and now we've got that on there and we just change the timing of that okay so we can't really see that animation which is fine we're all right so there's one thing i'm noticing we'll see them elements are popping out we don't want them to pop out. So simplest thing, just put um, put an put an overflow hidden. So elements are now trapped inside of there. Well, trapped, but clipped off is what we want. And then the last bit that we want to do. So this is where I'm changing my mind. So it's going to be a click. So I've just deleted that now. I'm like, oh no, what's going on? So I can literally just select that trigger again. I go in and I can still select that and it will still work for a click. I just need to change that. So that's that's how we would do it. And we can test this. Nothing. Right. And my reason for that is because this looks to be this shouldn't be well no, one. So now I'm going to have to change the Z index because this was overlapping that part that we needed to touch too. And let's go back. Beautiful. 
Right. Okay. So we've got that animation. The click worked, but it didn't. It didn't do all of the stuff that we needed it to do. So now we've got to go in here. We've got the Colnu. We can do a move, and it's giving me an interaction trigger, um, which is slightly different than that. Again, if you have an interaction um, trigger and you apply that to the same thing, it will automatically pick that up. So again, that could be a, a nice way if you're doing an element. Um, and then we want to move. Uh, let's try a percent to start with 20. And if we bring it to nine, uh, that's not good. But it a five oh, perfect. I wanted it so it joins that together, but we can do it like this, which is fine. And we do our core and we do 1.5. It's on zero. It's beautiful. Is that an element's moved out? That's really nice. So we've got a bit of an overlap here. There's still some elements overlapping. So I'm going to bring this up even higher. I'm going to go 10, really high. And I'm just going to go 11, mapped. So why has that coal new changed? Here we go. So this is, I think, one of the things that can be really tricky to get your hair on. Now, if we remember that we built out that um, load interaction, that page interaction, and on the interaction, we set a state for this this so what we actually done on the click is we tried doing a coal move again, but we set the initial position, but that isn't actually the initial position, which is causing this now to bug out. So if we get rid of the initial position, because we don't actually need to set the initial position, I did say initial position quite a few times, but um, it will it would now that when we go and um, do this interaction, because that position's already set you've only got to tell it where it needs to go i hope that makes sense so now it will work and there it is so we've got some issues here with the sizing um, and i'm going to have a look at this because i think it should be 90 percent. but let's let's just see how that that block sits out there you go i, I feel like it's hundred percent but that looks see see how that looks so different now because there's there's a weird space in between and maybe that's because of so yeah there is that weird space so strange um there's probably a way to counteract that really you want to be able to move that hundred percent and it be flush onto the side but again that's just thinking about still there so I'm gonna go down and then you remember them columns that I said I thought we were going to change? I think we might do that now. So if I click that, right, we're going to put a little bit more padding in these columns now. So I'm going to go in here. So now I put this first in here and to go back, make sure I select the new parent. I don't want to be putting stuff on top of combo classes because as you start to build through things, you imagine like you're putting little things on the ear, putting little things on here, and then all of a sudden it's just like, it just becomes a mess, it just becomes a big mess. So let's just do a little bit there. And beautiful. I'll take that. I'll take that. Don't know what's happened to me. Um a lot of the animations. They seem to have died. So let's just have a little check. Loop would help, and that is why. And there we go, loop, and we bring that in. <laughs> nice introduction, elements coming in, beautiful. Dun dun dun. And then we've got our eyes. And that lovely zoom effect now is, is really, really nice. <laughs> A couple more things to do on this. We're almost there on this bit. So, Raymar. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to finish up with this last bit and then we will call it a day. So I'm just going to do this last little bit here. So we have um, the coal new da -da -da, image parent. Da -da. 
Raymar's popping me off. Let's let's grab this last bit of text and we're going to do a quick text color change on this. Start like that. And then we're going to go to a color change text and we're going to bring it back to the color it was. Pop it in. Beautiful, really, really nice that was. And then to finish it off, and then we'll take a few questions, we're going to do the second click. So simplest way, get here, duplicate, click this one. And then what we need to do is we need to think about the sequence of this. So let's just go through this. We know that the sequence to that was um, 40 pixels. 40 pixels yeah 40 pixels opacity is going to be zero new parent 40 pixels so i'm just remembering the start position because that's where we need to go back to so i'm just redoing it like this so i go through this first i change this back to that new parent opacity it's going to be zero which parent zero Scale, go 1.2, I believe it was. Let's just check. Yep, yeah, 1.2. Come new. And that can go back to zero. Then we need to just flip these. So this is going to be one. Then we're going to grab these three. We're going to go point two. And two can go. One zero. These two to move them here. Point four. This coal here. Move point eight. I'm just gonna give the time for them elements to get back. I'm gonna select all of these. Delete. And hopefully, whew, we should be in one two. Beautiful. And that is it so far. As you can see, there was probably bundles more that we could do with this. Um, as I said, we've just kind of tapped, you know, tipped the iceberg. There's lots of different things that we can do with this. There was a slider idea that I had that I was going to build out. Um, you know, potentially, um, we could revisit and come back to um, a second, second, um, second. Something right, it might be great to see if this up. So, I'm just waiting for Raymar. Anything coming through? I could probably just pop the live stream on actually. Okay, I've got stuff here. So, I'm on, um, I'm on here now. This, this, the stream is running low. Um, no questions. I'm on YouTube now. I'm just going to have a look through here, guys. Um, just having a little look. Um, can't see the bottom of your screen. Yeah, sorry about that, Mads. Uh, or you can see it now. You made adjustments. There is a Rotate 6JS. That is great. Thanks, Norm. Um, Blake, be great to get HTML embed text. Uh, this will show you tops tip sharper. Right, yeah, cool. Yeah, that's no worries. Um, cheers for sending that over, Raymar. Part of the mask, I think, as part of the mask of having reference sections of code you commonly use. Yeah, that's a brilliant, it's a brilliant idea, Blake. And actually, little snippets I use, um, and I've put into a lot of my projects. So 